Hello and welcome everybody. Very pleased to welcome you to today's webinar through MBL Seminars. My name's Safta Mahmood. Today that I'm going to be speaking to you in this webinar about public children law cases, some of the latest practice guidance and statutory provisions. Now, as I'm sure you'll appreciate as a practitioner in this field, you do need to understand not just the developments in this field, but indeed the core principles. If, for example, you look into instruction expert, well, where's the guiding principles behind that? If you're resisting or applying for deprivation of liberty order, well, how does this tie in with, say, secure accommodation? So I'm going to be going through various key principles with you today and then looking at some of the updating developments on that also. We'll be looking at, for example, threshold, assessments, care orders, back finding hearings. So we've had the revised PLO in place now for uh, over a year and a half. So I'll be talking to you a little bit about running of cases following the relaunch of the PLO. We'll be looking at declarations as to parentage, disclosure of information. This is where you've got the, uh, the recent uh, police disclosure guidance. What about children at home under a care order? We'll have a look at that, the JW case, the use of the inherent jurisdiction, and how this ties in with perhaps using the wardship route in terms of also the interconnection with practice direction 12J. Long-term use of section 20, where do we stand with that? Can we have children under section 20 of the Children Act or section 76 of the 2014 Act in Wales? Good practice when working with parents with learning disabilities. Where are we with VBS? What's the more recent case law authorities on that in terms of realistic options? And of course, and very much of late, some of the controversies surrounding vaccinations. Where do we stand? What if somebody raises a religious objection to advanced vaccination? Where do we stand with that? And then, as you can imagine, part 25 is highly relevant. And therefore, where do we stand with applications for cognitive functioning assessments? What if we've already got findings made in a care case and there is a need for further hearing? Do we list it for further hearing? What about composite hearings? And as I mentioned, the position with deprivation of liberty and also we'll look at the positions around the family reporting pilot. So those are some of the areas I'd like to cover with you today.